All right, so check this out. That is a timer, 30 minute timer that I'm setting because, well, for the next 87 days, I'm going to sit here or somewhere else, wherever, and do 30 minutes of talking. <sighs> we have a tour coming up, and it starts September 16th. I'm sorry, March 16th. You'll see how unedited this is. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. March 16th. And so from today, it's 87 days until that starts. And uh, I am beyond excited. It's the first tour of any kind that the Fire Follows project has done. Uh, since it got started, it's just kind of my solo studio project in like 2018 or whatever it was. So it's unbelievably exciting. I'm absolutely stoked with the band that I've got. Uh, Emily Gould, Eldon McCoon, Ryan Milan, these guys are awesome. And, and they're phenomenal players, they're phenomenal people. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. And we're gonna be so dialed in and so ready. And, um, so yeah, very exciting. March 16th through I think like early mid-April. A lot of like Southern states, all of our socials have the, <clears throat> have the listing up on there so you can check that out. But the reason that I'm wanting to do this and commit to doing this, yeah, whatever, once a day, sit down, talk, is just as exciting as this is, as stoked as I am to finally be kind of moving this thing forward, there's so much other stuff going on that I am overwhelmed is probably an understatement. And so honestly, this is gonna be more like therapy, really. So <laughs> my therapy, and uh, if you want to, you're welcome to listen to it. Otherwise, this literally is an exercise for me to just give you guys daily updates, but also just sort of um, tell you guys what's going on behind the scenes and for my benefit, I guess, you know, just, just my own talk therapy here, whatever. I don't know, I've done a bad job, I think, of, though, in my mind, I suppose, I feel like everyone knows all these different things I'm doing. I haven't communicated them very clearly. And so part of this sit down every day and talk exercise is also sharing more with you guys about who I am, the other things that I do, and then why I even do this, because it's a lot. And it, I would say the majority of the time feels as daunting as it does exciting. And it's a weird state to exist in. The way that I fund all of this, all of the music, all of the production, the studio that I have, the cost of mixing, mastering, uh, marketing, PR, all this stuff, all of that is funded through the other company that I own. And that's a company called, it's kind of a funny name, Tree Beavers. It's a logging company. And I started it in, I think, well, the LLC was formed, I think in like 2012 or something like that. So it's been 10, 11 years in business, but I was doing it long before that, just as kind of a side hustle summer project. And <clears throat> it's been an incredible, journey, I guess. It's an incredible business and it's grown beyond what I could have ever anticipated. And it has allowed me in many ways, the flexibility to essentially be full time with it and full time with the fire follow stuff. And I say full time because every time I, I sit down to try to make a video that says something like I'm going full time with music, I'm like, I'm all right, I've been doing this the whole time I've just been divided. So 
it's a lot of hours in you know both camps but but it's been a it's been an incredible blessing and it's given me a lot of space but at the same time running a business especially a, like a and it's i call it logging it, you can go to our website i've got a ton of cool like aerial drone videos and things like that just google tree beavers and it's out of colorado but it'll be the first thing that pops up it's it's land clearing basically we do a lot of uh, reclamation work like in natural disaster areas where pine beetle or, or uh, wildfires things like that have come through and then we also do just a lot of wildfire mitigation work in overgrown areas so but like I said, check it out. You, you might actually really dig it. But running that business is that I've got employees that I have an insane amount of accountability to and, and responsibility for. And then we also have a lot of big machines that the way this generally works when you're a startup, the way that I was with this company, which was absolutely zero, uh, a chainsaw and a truck. Literally, that was it. <clears throat> you don't have the cash, you don't have the capital to go out and buy this stuff. And so you end up financing everything. And financing is great because it allows you get in to get into things, into machines in this case, that you otherwise can't, but you carry a, a huge burden in doing that. And so not only do I have this company where I'm always trying to make sure we've got work, good work, good profitable work, the kind that's conducive to our machines and our process and lets us do what we do. And, and, and obviously I've got phenomenal guys that, that in many ways run this thing, especially the op side, but it's still a 24 seven, it's, it's in my mind always because at any moment, catastrophic failure is possible. It happens all the time and it's brutal when it does because it's so expensive and it can shut us down for a long time. And then obviously, you know, there's, there, I'll, go, I'll do another video more on that. But the reason I say that is because I just haven't shared that side of my life with you guys. And it's as much of a part of my life now as the music is because it's it's literally the other thing that, that I do full time. And again, it's, it's what funds all of this. I, I make no money from music. All I, I, <laughs> I would say that I lose money. I don't lose it. This is all an investment to me. I believe in it more than I could ever begin to describe. And so as difficult as it can be to continue to throw money at something that doesn't have any kind of monetary return, I believe that that isn't A, the point, and B, at some point, this is all going to work out exactly the way it's supposed to, right? But in the meantime, I, I don't have any other choice than to keep this, this, this logging company, this machine going over here so that we can make money so that I can afford to do all the music stuff, which includes all the production that I do in the studio. Now this tour, the expenses of that, which is going to be insane. And again, I mean, I'm feeling infinitely better today than I was like maybe four or five days ago when we just shortly after we committed to doing this and it just hit me. I was like, there's, there are like a million variables in play. I mean, yeah, just even, even with my band, like getting everyone tightened up and, and they don't, some, they don't know a lot of the new songs and new material. So I got to bring them in individually and they're really talented. So they learn it quickly, but it's just details like that. It's making sure that I'm, that we're giving the correct parts and, you know, selecting the correct harmonies and we've got to do some tune-up shows locally. And I've got to get a, a van, which I'll do an episode on that, I'm sure too, the van that I'm buying. And I got to do an internal conversion in it to get everything ready um, so that we can sleep at least five or six people while we're out. And obviously I want to build something that's like ready to go for the next tour. I mean, that's the whole reason I'm doing this is we, We've got to take this first step to go out, to absolutely kill it, to just just max this thing out on run one so that hopefully we get some quick opportunities for a second one and we're in position to do that. So anyway, that's uh, that's the thing. I mean, I, I just, I'm, at some point I'll look back on this collection of 87, I think it is, sort of 87 videos, and I'll be interested to see how my my mental state, my, 
uh, my frame, how it was either staying the same or changing, which is what I very much expect it to do. And, uh, and along the way, like I said, I want to let you guys in to all of this to see what just, I don't even know what to call this. Something like pursuing an ultimate goal or a, or a passion or, a, or just a life purpose, whatever. It means so much to me that, I mean, I, I'll just, I guess I'll do whatever I've got to do to continue moving this thing forward. Um, even if it means, at least for the time being, that I feel, uh, yeah, overwhelmed. But it's, 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 a, it's not, it's very doable. It just, it's got to be done in, 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 in manageable pieces and it's got to be done, you know, in some kind of progressive way. So again, this is partly therapy for me. A lot of this is just going to be me fucking rambling about whatever's in my brain. But <clears throat> I knew this morning when I got up, uh, this, that not doing this podcast because of my insistence oftentimes on things being so fucking perfect, which can be so paralyzingly frustrating. It's, it's another of the added to the list of a thousand things I feel like I'm not doing and, and not doing well, obviously, but in this case, just wasn't even doing it. And I've been in process of doing it, it feels like forever. And so this is a, a way to just say, all right, I'm committed once a day, set the timer, 30 minutes, talk, and then just upload it. And uh, I don't know what the topics are going to be about. Uh, you know, there's a few things I've already touched on with the company. I want to talk about entrepreneurship. I want to talk about, um, obviously, like music and, and, and the business side of it, as well as all, all the things like my, you know, the loss of my voice and, and how I got it back and the surgeries and the prosthetic vocal cord that I have. And I, I've talked about that before, but I want to I want to really tell that story, I guess, again, and, and just continue to tell it in a way that that hopefully, I don't know. I don't know, does something good, I guess. But but then there's there's all these other things that I, I think are always with me and that I that I see. And I, I spend so much of my life in isolation because of the things that I do. I mean, my company is, I, I run it not entirely remotely. I go out on site, um, but especially to assess projects and other things. But like, I do a lot of the work for my company in here. You know, and, and then obviously all my studio stuff is done in here and I do everything on the recording and production side by myself. So, you know, that's another thing I want to talk about is like, yes, it allows me to get a lot done, but it's coming and I can feel this. It's coming at a very high price in terms of like these levels of isolation for days and days and days. I mean, literally, it's just me and the dogs in this house and um it's wearing me down, you know, and again, right now, this season, it calls for it. And so it just, it is what it is. But I, I think that's another thing that I'll probably at some point, um, via my online therapy here, want to talk about. So yeah, if you guys have questions or comments, you know, that would be great for me too. Cause if you can throw those in and I can get a sense of what you want to, what you want to know. Like, do you want to, do you want to know about more details about how I started this logging company and how I grew it over the course of 10 years from z literally zero truck chainsaw, that's it. And the processes that we use, the way we marketed, you know, how we, the types of machines and the types of debt. And I, it, I mean, I can go on for days about that stuff, right? I can talk about my voice. I, I've got Tourette's. I know you see me twitching all the time. I can talk about Tourette's. I mean, I can talk about, you know, some of the sacrifices of pursuing big things like this, starting and growing a company, trying to start this music project that I've got uh, big goals and big ambitions for because of, of how, uh, you know, passionate I am about it and how strongly I feel about the music and the message and, and every element of it. So, yeah, you guys throw it in there. And uh, that'll help guide me, I think. So that's my therapy section. I know I've said that too many times now, but yeah, we're going on tour 
And and I, I swear to God, it's been like a week since we uh, got everything finalized and signed the agreements and stuff. And like, it still has not even close to sunk in yet. I think what a big deal this is, especially where I was, you know, over 10 years ago without the ability to speak and sing. And this thing was fucking toast. I mean, there was just nothing. And it's been such a brutal um, fight to get back to this point and now to have an opportunity to jump on this thing with uh, the two bands were, well, Smile Empty Soul is the main headliner who, you know, I, I remember those guys, when I was in high school, those guys were, that was when they were blowing up. <clears throat> and I love Smile Empty Soul. And so they'll be the headliner of the whole show and Tantric will be on, I think like 70 or 80% of the dates. Same thing with Tantric. I mean, same timeline, right? It's that early, what would you call it? Like maybe early 2000s rock, right? But I love both of these bands and just to, to be able to go out and do whatever we're going to do, 20 plus dates with them. It's going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, we'll get to showcase a lot of the new music, all, all the new music. It's, uh, I think we're doing a 30 minute set, so it'll be, <clears throat> if we fly through it, we can do seven songs. It might end up being six, but either way, I mean, I've run through the set list probably 30 or 40 times since we knew that we were going to be doing this. And I, it's awesome. I mean, it's it's such a cool, yeah. It's just gonna be really great. So, <clears throat> I'm very pumped. I'm very stoked. And like I said in the beginning, the other uh, members that I'm bringing into this, as well as, I don't wanna forget her, um, Song River, the woman that does my PR. She's the one that really helped to facilitate this. And she's been <clears throat> the music industry, like any other industry, it's got good people and it's got bad people, just like all life, right? But the music industry is ridiculous. It's, it's a, well, that'll be a whole nother episode. It's, it's a lot of people that, that want to tell you how to do things, but that don't have the ability, interest, capacity, whatever, to execute. Almost nobody can execute. And so, yeah. Yeah, but that's true of everything. So execution, ideas and strategies are fucking dime a dozen. Execution is everything. If you can execute, you're valuable in every aspect of life because so few people have any interest uh, or I guess the ability, whatever, to execute at a high level. So learn to execute. You'll be in rarefied air. But yeah, Song River, if any other bands or musicians need PR, she's incredible, but she's, she's a bright spot in an industry that otherwise has been, um, and is just can be really, really difficult to move through. And <clears throat> so yeah, she'll be coming along and, uh, her daughter might be joining as well, which would be great. Cause it just gives us a couple additional people to tighten up all the loose ends and help with merch and set up some other, um, press stuff along the way and so it's going to be good i got um i got ryan coming over here in about an hour let's see yeah we're gonna start working on the he's the lead guitar uh, player we're gonna start working on guitar stuff and i have to remember the <laughs> lead lines like when i track these songs <clears throat> You know, I'll usually do them in sections. Maybe I'll do an episode, on, I'm sure I will, on like the songwriting process, but <clears throat> I it usually starts with the rhythm guitar or the um, piano oftentimes is what I'll start with to write the song, but the rhythm guitar piece is usually what's really driving the song. The vocal is always the main thing, but the, the rhythm guitar is probably the most um, like a foundational piece that everything else kind of follows, right? Everyone, you know, the drums, obviously everyone thinks is that's the, but, but the drums are really moving off of what the guitar is doing in this stuff. So <clears throat> anyway, what that means is that when I'm tracking all this, I'll usually get the rhythms in place and then throw a quick uh, drum piece in just to have something to work with. And then when I'll start tracking the leads, I just find things and I'll, I might go through a thousand iterations of a certain piece and a certain section on every song, but <clears throat> I'll find something that works really well or that I really like with the chorus or not the chorus with the vocal. I'm sure the chorus, but with the vocal 
and then it's obviously cooperating with all the other synth stuff that's in there. And then I'll track it and I'll forget it. <laughs> and so it's not a big deal because I'm not a lead guitarist. So these are not difficult parts, but um, it's funny because last night we were getting time set up for him to come over today. And I was literally just, I couldn't sleep, of course, insomniatic. I mean, always so frustrating, but um, I'm like, listening back to the songs and I'm just ISOing all of the lead guitar parts and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> Remembering your own lead guitar parts is pretty fun. But anyway, he'll be over in a bit. We'll get those uh, dialed in. He's a quick study. They're all quick studies. <clears throat> the other thing I'm looking forward to is um, and I won't, well, Ryan, we've never tried to do any of the vocal stuff, but uh, both Emily and Eldon are phenomenal vocalists. And the new music especially is so heavily layered vocally that that is going to be, I think, the thing that I'm, that's really going to make this set and this whole project from a touring perspective so dynamic and explosive is is integrating that deep vocal layering, harmonizing into this hard rock, metal, whatever this genre even is, I don't know. But having that in there uh, in a way that is its own thing because it's live and I like it, I want it to be a little bit different, but it's staying pretty true to the songs as they're recorded and produced. <clears throat> That's gonna be great. And, and like I said, they're both so good that they pick this stuff up quick and, and yeah, it's a lot of work to get everybody's uh, tightening that up in addition to the, you know, instruments. But once it gels together, it's, it's freaking awesome. <clears throat> so we'll get dialed in on that. I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, the van. I put up some merch ideas on um, Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram, a day or two ago. <clears throat> so if you guys haven't seen those yet, go to the Instagram and let me know what you think. I'm probably, I don't know, probably just gonna do one design, I think. Keep it simple. There's a lot of keep it simple, stupid stuff going on around here right now. And there has to be when you've got too many irons in the fire. And each of them, they're interlinked. Like you can't let one of them fall apart because if it does, the whole thing can unravel. And that's sort of how this is set up right now <clears throat> with the music and the business and everything else that's just it's kind of one big mechanism. So yeah, you got to keep it simple. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, just so many things. It's good though. This is actually a good microcosm this moment right now where I'm, I'm sifting through my mind to try to think of something else to talk about that's interesting. <clears throat> and it's not that there's a lack of things, it's that there's so many, I just, this is what I'm struggling with at the moment, and then I'm gonna have to get better at it. And I've been improving my entire life, right? Like I'm always, I feel like I'm always getting better at most things as I have to, as I have to grow and develop and enhance and all that, whatever, but <clears throat> this is, yeah. With the logging company, 
part of like the last five years, we've grown a lot, not necessarily in the size or the number of employees, rather. We actually, in a lot of ways, we have less employees now than uh, when we did in the beginning even, and that's because we rely on these machines to do <clears throat> so much of the work. And one of the trade-offs, which is a good thing, um, but it can be difficult, is that when you start doing these logging, land clearing, whatever projects, they're larger projects, and so when they dry up, and they generally don't, that's a bit too extreme, they don't dry up, but we might have these lapses, uh, you know, a week or two. And it, I, I hate it so much because it's so expensive to run this thing. And the work always shows up. You know, we've got such a good network of clients and developers and builders and everybody now, but <clears throat> right now, like today is Sunday, we don't have anything lined up for tomorrow, at least not on the logging side. I've set up a second kind of division that's a sawmill for this thing that I think is going to be absolutely awesome. Um, but we're not selling any of that product yet. We're still just in the phase of milling and doing a lot of the planning and organizing and building the website, and setting up the warehouse. <clears throat> so that's, I guess, another thing. It's Tree Beaver's you know, company, obviously, but it's, it's sort of its own thing. So as I'm sitting here and I'm, again, this is what I'm talking about, this like fracturing of your mind when you just, you just have too many things as I'm, I'm wanting uh, to focus on I'm getting ready for Ryan to get over here and do the guitar stuff. And it's like, in the back of my mind, I'm going, we have nothing lined up for tomorrow for a couple of our logging uh, machines to do. Who can I call? <laughs> uh, which one of my builders needs a, needs a discount job to uh, move something forward? You know, I do this all the time. Or I'll call these guys and say, I'll give you, you know, 10, 20% off, whatever, really. Because my big thing is I want to keep my guys working. <clears throat> it's always this tough decision if, if you have these lapses. Do you keep guys on the payroll even though you're not working? Or do you not pay them and just have them sitting on the couch? And as far as I'm concerned, and what I've always done and what I'll always do is the answer is you pay them. In this market, finding really skilled, good, reliable guys that are willing to do this kind of work, even though what we do is more mechanized now, there's still some element of manual labor. You cannot afford to lose them and it's just the right thing to do. So like if we don't work this week, it's not good, but um, I've got to make sure these guys are covered. And so we always figure something out, whether it's just, you know, equipment maintenance or I don't know, you know, we'll pull some small little side project or my dumbass went and bought, um, I went and bought goats. I don't know why. I just, I mean, they're awesome. I really like having them, but in moments like these and seasons like these, I was like, geez, this is all. So I, the, my property where my studio is at is on two and a half acres. So it's not like they're hard. It's like owning a gerbil practically, but. Anyway, what I was saying is there's lots of little stuff to do around here with them, and then we do some tree spading as well, so we might do some spading, or even sometimes we'll just bring trees over to my place and transplant them here from like a different lot, and then just keep them, <clears throat> A, because I like them, but B, if we need to use them down the road, we can do that, so anyway. So this is kind of a typical Sunday, you know, like if I wasn't getting ready for the uh, for the show stuff, I'd be um, recording or, or doing some kind of writing or something like that. And then also working the Tree Beaver stuff to get us ready for this week. <clears throat> Just touch up invoicing, billing, calling clients or whatever and making sure we're all squared up, talking to my guys, making sure we got supplies. And so we've got a good system and it's uniform, but yeah, this is definitely a... This is definitely a lot, but it's it's the price, and it's a it's a worthy price. But it's the price you pay for entrepreneurship and trying to run a business. Is you gain in many ways flexibility and freedom, um, but in the ways that you don't, 
you really are uh, a slave to the businesses that you start. And, and I, I don't mean that, in a, it's not a, uh, there's no victim element to that. It's just, you're accountable, you're responsible. You gotta get it done, so anyway. Like I said, if you made it to the end of that, awesome. I'm sorry, because I feel like I am just uh, kind of rambling, but that's what these are gonna be, because I'm committed to doing them. I'm tired of not fucking doing them. So every day, 30 minutes for the next 87 days, I'm gonna log on here. We're gonna record, we're gonna upload. If you guys have anything you wanna hear me talk about on any of the shit that I've talked about so far, <clears throat> just throw it in the comments and I'll do my best to try to not be um... yeah. rambling away. Thanks guys.